Hello guys and welcome back to another true crime video. Today's video is on the Kelly Ann Bates murder and torture. Viewer discretion is advised. In today's video, it is just so graphic, so please be warned. If you think this video may upset you, please just don't watch. My heart really goes out to her family because it's just so horrible. But thank you so much for everybody who's shown support this far. I've got 330 subscribers and I'm just very grateful for it. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy today's video. Please, please, please stay safe out there. And thanks again for all the support. Kelly M. Bates was born on May 18, 1978 in Hattersley, England. Her family was always very close and described Kelly as a confident, independent, mature girl for her age. So it wasn't a big surprise when at age 14, she told her parents she had a boyfriend named Dave. However, this is where the trouble began. Kelly often babysat for families in her area, while on one particular babysitting job, she met James Patterson Smith. Smith was a 49-year-old man who was smitten with 14-year-old Kelly Ann. She decided to keep many aspects of their relationship a secret, thinking her parents wouldn't understand. When she told them about Dave, they assumed he was just a boy, probably from school, around the same age as her. Kelly and James got along great. He was her first ever boyfriend. However, it wasn't long before she looked for ways to spend more time with him. She started sneaking out at night, sometimes not returning home until the next morning, and sometimes not returning home for two days at a time. In fake concern, Dave began calling her home, speaking to her mother about Kelly's activities. Instantly, her mom felt like she had an ally. A couple of weeks later, Kelly brought Dave home to meet her parents. When her father saw him and saw that he was much older than he had expected, he asked his daughter, He's a bit older than you, Kelly. Are you sure that's what you want? Kelly replied with, I would have been with older people anyway. She had grown up around older people and even played hockey with the girls in college. She told her parents he was only 32. As her mother caught sight of Dave coming down the stairs, she had a different reaction. Kelly's mom said, As soon as I saw Smith, the hairs on the back of my neck went up. I tried everything I could to get Kellyanne away from him. She began asking around, trying to find out if anyone knew who this Dave Smith, aged 32, was, but no one had ever heard of him. It was as if he didn't exist. Yes, her parents could have forbade her from seeing Dave. However, they took some pride in the independence and confidence that Kelly was just radiating. They also thought Kelly was old enough to make her own decisions. And they opted to allow the relationship, for now. Over the next few months, Kelly continued to see James off and on. He was charming, and Kelly felt good about the attention he gave her. Knowing Kelly had lied to her parents, not once, but multiple times, he used that to drive a deeper wedge between her and her family. Kelly felt that she could no longer reach out to her family to let them know what was happening in her relationship. This was because she felt like she had done so much to make her parents happy with their relationship. After being with James for a year, she began staying with him over weekends, Friday to Sunday. He would call and check on Kelly constantly, showing his control over her. This interest in Kelly made her feel that he truly loved her. However, she interpreted this as he really cared to check on her more than her own family. By age 16, she is spending even more time with him at his home, not even bothering to call her parents. When she returned home, they almost didn't recognize her. She wasn't clean. Her hair was dirty, greasy, and unkempt. Her clothes were dirty. Her posture was eroded, and her head was always down. Her chin was practically to her chest. Her mother put her foot down and told her, If you don't like the rules we're setting, you've got to let us know where you are. Let us know you're alright. The next time you do it, you can go. Kelly chose to leave. Allegedly, James Patterson Smith would also tell Kelly that her parents were trying to ruin the pair's relationship. A few days later, she returned home to pack her things. When her mom walked in, she found that one side of her face was just black. One solid bruise. Kelly claimed that she had been jumped by some girls. Kelly's mom begins to notice other injuries as time goes on. Fingertip bruising around her neck, 
bite marks on her arms. Kelly always claimed that she just fell or even tripped. Her mother contacted the authorities and asked what she could do. They instructed her to make a doctor's appointment in Kelly's name, then go in and explain what was happening. Then, if Kelly ever turns up at the doctor, they will know and be able to assess accordingly. Kelly's mother begs her to leave Dave, but Kelly refuses. She stops seeing her mother, telling her she got a job and had opportunity for overtime. Knowing Kelly enjoyed working, her mother believed her, and they only spoke on the phone from that point. By now, James has complete control over Kelly. She no longer speaks with her family. She sends cards, but she doesn't even sign them, and they're not addressed in her handwriting. Her brother tries to see Kelly at her home that she now shares with James, but James just tells him she's not home. When a concerned neighbour asks how Kelly was, James allowed Kelly to be briefly seen through an upstairs window. Kelly no longer went out. Kelly resigned from her part-time job in December 1995. On March 10th, 1996, Kellyanne's mother, Margaret, told Kelly off for missing a dental appointment. This was the last ever conversation she had with her daughter. On April 16th, 1996, James makes his way to the police station, where he calmly tells the police, Kelly has drowned in the bath. Police went to her parents' house, and before they could say anything, her mother says, he killed her. Kelly was only 17 years old. Okay, this is a verbal warning, just in case you've missed the other warnings. There will be a timestamp on where you should skip if you do not want to hear the graphic injuries. Kelly was held prisoner for weeks, where James took his time torturing her with various types of household items. He burnt her all over her body using hot irons and scalding water. He tied her hair to the radiator, and when her hair wasn't tied to the radiator, he tied it to a chair or wrapped a ligature around her neck. He broke her arm and then crushed both of her kneecaps, leaving her unable to move and fully reliant on him. The pathologist who examined her body said, In my career, I have examined almost 600 victims of homicide, but I have never come across injuries so extensive. He was also able to determine that Kelly's eyes had been removed not less than five days and not more than three weeks before her death. She had been starved, losing at least 44 pounds and had not been given any water for several days before her death. When police did in fact find her body in a bathtub, they could see that how it got there was no accident. After knocking Kelly unconscious with the shower nozzle, James then had to have forced her head under the water. James claimed that he had initially assumed she was just playing dead, as she had done that in the past, but when the authorities arrived, they found Kelly's blood smeared on the floors and walls in every room of the house. Despite the overwhelming evidence of his torture, James maintained Kelly's death happened on accident and that her injuries were self-inflicted. At the trial, James continued to declare his innocence. He claimed Kelly, quote-unquote, would put me through hell winding me up. He also said that Kelly would taunt him about his dead mother and often hurt herself to make it look worse. When he was asked to explain why he had blinded, stabbed, and battered her, he said that Kelly had dared him to do it. A consultant psychiatrist told the court that James had a severe paranoid disorder with morbid jealousy and that he lived in a distorted reality. It wasn't until November 12, 1977, which was the trial Kellyanne's parents would learn that Dave Smith was actually 49-year-old James Patterson Smith. Kellyanne's family and the court would hear of James's violent past. James Patterson Smith had a long history of abusing the woman he lived with. His first marriage ended in accusations of physical violence, and another woman Smith had dated told similar stories. He even once tried to drown a 15-year-old girlfriend. The jury only took one hour to find James Patterson Smith 
guilty of Kelly Ann Bates murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, serving a minimum of 20 to 25 years. The jurors on this case were so traumatized by what they heard in the photographs that were shown, they were all offered counseling, and every single one of them accepted. James Patterson Smith is still in jail today. Okay, that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and please, stay safe out there. Make sure that you follow me on social media and stay tuned for more videos.